Okay, so we are going to go going a little bit further into detail um, looking at circuits. Um, the goal for this lesson here is to look at uh, two different terms. Uh, one term being potential difference uh, and another term being current. Okay, so you may have heard of these terms before. We're going to go and discuss basically what it is, what it represents, and what it means for when we're looking at circuits. Okay. So potential difference is kind of a difficult thing to grasp sometimes. Uh, you may otherwise know this as a different term called voltage. So um, usually when we're discussing voltage or potential difference, we usually refer to that uh, from a battery, right? So maybe you have a three volt battery or a six volt battery. You may have heard of that before. Um, but Essentially, what I want you to do is understand what, what this actually means. Okay, so before we can kind of get into that, um, you have to think about, well, what does potential energy mean? Potential energy is energy that is stored within something, an object. So think of the term potential. Maybe you've been told, hey, you have uh, a lot of potential. Uh, it means that it's something that has not yet happened yet, but it has the ability to do it. So if somebody says, hey, you have the potential to, you know, become an author, uh, that means you're, you're not an author yet, uh, but you have the writing capability um, of maybe doing that one day. Right? So it's a potential that has not been used. So potential energy here means exactly the same thing. It's energy that is stored, but has not yet been used. So the example that they're using here, and your textbook goes into this as well, is they're talking about an apple on a tree. Okay, so imagine this apple that's on the tree, my blue apple, who knows, but uh, this apple that has not yet fallen, so it has not fallen yet, but it has the potential to fall a certain distance, right? Like it hasn't yet, but then when it does, of course it did. So when we're looking at um, the energy of, let's say for in this case, we're looking at gravity, uh, the potential distance that an apple has to fall will be different for each apple. So this apple that I drew up here, has a bigger potential because it has a higher distance to fall from, okay? Now, what does this have to do with circuits? So potential energy, when we're referring to circuits, is the energy that is inside of the electrons that are coming from our source, our electrical source. So that's why usually we think of battery voltages because that's where the electrons are essentially coming from. So if we have a three volt battery, okay, for example, what that means is the electrons that are produced from that battery have the amount of energy stored inside of it that is equal to three volts. So for example, if I have a six volt battery, compare it to a three volt battery, that means the electrons that are from the six volt battery have potential to do to use more energy right we have six basically we have double the amount of energy that we could potentially use okay so it doesn't mean we're using it yet it is energy that we can use so what does that mean for us okay before i get into that we're going to look at this in terms of a circuit Okay, so here is my battery, my one cell battery, and I have a light bulb. Okay, so let's say, for example, I have a three volt battery. Okay, so capital letter V represents voltage or potential difference. I want you to think of this as, we're gonna use an analogy or something to help us remember what's going on here. I want you to think of this three volts as being energy that electrons can use. So remember that electrons always leave out of the negative terminal, right? And then they'll come around back to the positive terminal. So think of this almost like 
the electrons spending money, okay, but it's energy. So the electrons that are leaving this battery have the potential to spend three volts. So what that means is this light bulb could be a three volt light bulb. So every load that you attach to your circuit has a voltage requirement. So for example, this light bulb might require three volts in order to actually turn on. So that means you must use a three volt battery, right? So think of this um, as being the amount of energy the electron has the ability to spend. Now, how do we measure potential difference? Is you have to take two points on the circuit and we measure the difference in energy at those two points. So I'll give you an example. If we were to measure the energy before coming into the light bulb and after leaving the light bulb, we would be measuring how much energy those electrons spent. So the electrons came in with three volts to spend. So at this point here, the electrons still have their energy. They haven't used it up yet. But when it passes through this light bulb, it's going to use its energy because we want the light bulb to turn on, right? So when it leaves the light bulb, it actually will leave with that three volts worth of energy being used up. So the reason why this is called potential difference is because you're measuring the difference in voltage at two points on the circuit. Usually we measure it before it enters into something and when it ed exits something. Okay, usually a load or a battery or an electrical source. Those are usually the two areas where we would want to measure this. Okay, so for example, let's say we wanted to measure exiting the, the battery and entering into the battery. When these electrons left the battery, they had three volts that they could have spent. And when they traveled along this circuit, they spent it at this light bulb. So the electrons that are coming back into this battery will have zero volts, right? They've spent their energy. So again, the difference here would be three volts. Okay, we'll use a different example. So let's say we have a two cell battery. Okay. Okay, so here we have our electron direction. Okay, so let's say we were told, okay, so when we're making this circuit, this light bulb has to require two volts, and this light bulb here also requires two volts. Okay, so in order for this whole circuit to run, you have to think the electrons that are leaving this battery have to spend two volts here and travel and spend another two volts here before returning back to the battery. So if we were to measure the difference between leaving this battery and coming home, you wanna think about how much energy was spent along this trip. So two plus two means a total of four volts was spent when it left compared to when it came back, right? So that means that four volts is what the electrons had when they left the battery and they returned with zero, right? So you have to think, at this point, when they entered into this battery, they had four volts. When the electrons exited this battery, uh, um, pardon me, not battery, light bulb. So when they came in, they had four volts. They spent two of the four. It has two volts remaining. So the difference between those two is two volts. So as it continues along, at this point, it has two volts. And after it exits the second light bulb, there are zero volts. 
And when it returns to the battery, it has the zero volts. So when you're thinking of potential difference or voltage, you have to consider the difference in energy of those two points, right? You're measuring, basically what you're measuring is how much energy was spent at different points along the circuit. So again, to remember, where can we measure this potential difference? Really, there's only two locations. At a load, so it could be a, a light bulb or a motor or a resistor. It doesn't matter the type of load, but we can measure at a load or at an electricity source, which is most likely going to be a battery. Okay, so let's continue on and look at the notes. We'll come back to this, but this is the general concept of voltage. Think of it as the amount of energy that that electron can spend. And when you look at the loads, it actually will let us know, well, how much energy really was spent. Okay, so a battery has chemical potential energy in the electrolyte in its electrochemical cells. So last week you read up on electrochemical cells. So really, how does a battery make electrons? Is it's a chemical reaction inside of that cell between, and the note is here, between the electrolyte and the electrodes. So basically the metal part of the battery is reacting with a paste. Most batteries have a paste or a liquid inside, okay? So the electrons are created. And of course we have the difference of the voltage is measured at the two terminals. So going back to this, this is what they're referring to. So whenever you're measuring the voltage at a battery, you would have to measure the positive and negative terminal differences. Same thing with the positive and negative terminal difference at the load. So when we have um, a battery, right, we're looking at potential difference. The difference in electric potential energy between two points in the circuit is called the potential difference or voltage, capital V um, is its symbol, okay? So again, you can measure the voltage at the load, which is here, or at the actual battery or cell. So this difference causes the current to flow in a closed circuit, of course. So you should make note that you can only really measure this when you have electrons flowing, right? So if you have an open circuit, you won't be able to measure the electron energy because the electrons are not flowing through the conductor. So it has to be a closed circuit. The higher the potential difference in the circuit, so think of the higher the voltage, the greater the potential energy of each electron. So that should make sense, right? If we go back, this three volt battery has all these electrons that are leaving the battery have only three volts worth of energy to use. But my four volt battery, now these electrons that are leaving this battery have more energy that they can spend. So the bigger the voltage of the battery, the more energy those electrons will have to spend. Think of it almost as uh, electricity spending money, right? So we have four volts worth to spend when we go around in this circuit. Okay, so how do we measure this? So we mentioned, you know, I put my little X's on this circuit, but like what, how do we actually do that? So there is a piece of equipment called a voltmeter, okay? And later next week, you're gonna do um, a gizmo on circuits. So you'll take a look at what this um, voltmeter looks like. Um, but basically, you have a, a digital display and you basically touch the circuit with these black and red, uh, they're called probes, okay? So where I made my little X actually, is where you would touch the probe of that circuit. I'll do another diagram to show you what I mean by that. 